response. A new poll out today shows Americans wanted to withdraw from Afghanistan, but they disapprove of the way you've handled it. Poll also found that based in part on what's transpired in the last week, a majority of Americans, and forgive me, I'm just the messenger, no longer consider you to be competent, focused, or effective in the job. I haven't seen that poll. It's out there um, from CBS this morning. Um, <laughs> what would you say to those Americans who no longer believe that you're up to the job? I had a basic decision to make. I either withdraw America from a 20-year war that, depending on whose analysis you accept, cost us $150 million a day for 20 years or $300 million a day for 20 years, who, and I, you know I carry this card to me every day, and who, in fact, uh, where we lost 2,448 Americans dead and 20,722 wounded. Either increase the number of forces we keep, we keep there and keep that going, or I end the war. And I decided to end the war. Temple it says the war is over. Well, then we must go back. If there are any stragglers, they will fall into the trap and be killed. Hmm. Suggest dismantling the coded signal, do you? Yes, Master. There is too much at stake. I agree. And a little more knowledge might light our way. What would you say to those Americans who no longer believe that you're up to the job? That was Biden just hours ago, and yet another mumbling, stumbling, bumbling performance in which he tried to spin his way out of the disaster he's created, but at the same time admitted it could get even worse, that he might have to extend the withdrawal deadline that just days ago he was adamant he would stick to, and perhaps most astonishingly promised tough screening for every non-US national evacuated from Afghanistan while leaving our southern border wide open. Evening everyone, welcome to The Next Revolution. I'm Steve Hilton and this is the home of positive populism, pro-worker, pro-family, pro-community and especially pro-America. This was the New York Times this morning, the front page. On Saturday morning, a former interpreter for an American company in Kabul plunged into a mass of humanity outside a gate at the Kabul airport with her family in tow, including her husband, and two-year-old daughter. Then the crowd surged. The entire family was slammed to the ground. She remembered someone smashing her cell phone and someone else kicking her in the head. As she struggled to her feet, she said, she searched for her toddler. The girl was dead, trampled to death by the mob. But no one's being killed right now. She might as well say, trampled to death by Joe Biden. Along with all the others, at least 12 crushed at the airport gates yesterday, another seven today. How many more? Will we see Americans slaughtered? Will they be taken hostage? Dozens, hundreds, thousands? We don't know. Biden doesn't know. He doesn't seem to care. Desperate people clinging to American planes and falling to their deaths. And what's the response from Mr. Empathy and Compassion? That was four days ago. Have you ever heard anything so cold, so callous, so heartless? As the saying goes, the presidency doesn't change who you are, it reveals who you are. And these last few days, we've seen who Biden really is. He's a liar. He lied in April when he announced all this. He lied in July when he defended it. He lied last Monday. He lied to George Stephanopoulos on Wednesday. He lied on Friday and now it's Sunday. So he lied again. He said Americans were having no trouble getting to the airport, even as his own State Department was sending out security alerts saying, don't even try getting to the airport because the US government cannot ensure safe passage. Biden said Al Qaeda is gone from Afghanistan minutes later. His own Defense Department said that wasn't true. Now we learn that not only is Al-Qaeda not gone, their Haqqani network is controlling the perimeter of Kabul airport. Biden's put the people who attacked us on 9-11 as the TSA for the Americans he trapped behind enemy lines. Biden said he planned for this outcome, planned for it. If this, if, if this chaos is his plan, well, he should resign just for that. He said no one around the world is questioning his credibility. Yeah, 
No one except the current UK Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, described as furious, let down, it's a betrayal. Biden is, quote, lightweight and inward-looking. According to one report, they think Biden is, quote, a bit doolally. That's British for senile. The former Prime Minister, Tony Blair, called it tragic, dangerous and unnecessary. And then he used this word, imbecilic. Joe, if you're having a slow day, that's not a recipe, it's not in balsamic. Blair said imbecilic, as in imbecile, as in you, Joe Biden, are an imbecile. You do imbecilic buffoon, stop pestering me. This is delicate work. He called us imbecilic buffoons. Yeah, and you thought he didn't like us. Biden told us he's a foreign policy genius, years of experience, America's back. He's so delusional, he really believes it. And that is why we're in this mess. After his shameful attempts to blame everyone but himself, the Afghans, Obama, Trump, the State Department, the intelligence agencies for his catastrophe, well, now the leaks are coming thick and fast. The warnings from the military, the dissent memo from the diplomats. Biden was told that rushing to get everyone out to meet his misjudged and offensive political deadline of September the 11th would be a disaster, but he did it anyway, because as we can now see, Biden is a frightening combination of ignorant and arrogant, senile and stubborn. So look where the great foreign policy genius has landed us, with what's been described by the Germans as the biggest debacle NATO has suffered since its founding by others as the worst foreign policy disaster in American history. His own generals raising the terror threat level here as a direct result of Biden's actions. Biden and all these wretched establishment nitwits sold themselves as the mature, competent adults who understand governance, who know how to run things after the chaos of Trump. Well, now we see how utterly clueless they are. Chaos in Afghanistan, chaos at the border, chaos in the cities with crime out of control, chaos about to hit the economy with inflation back, all of it a direct result of their policies. Even on the pandemic, chaos as their own actions undermine confidence in the vaccine and their ability to get things under control. Look at the mess. In less than a year, two massive humanitarian crises, one on the other side of the world and one on our own southern border. Guess who's suffering? The poor, the vulnerable, the exact people the left claim they speak for. Never forget that this is what Democrats do when they get in power. They hurt the people they say they want to help. But above all, we now see the true nature of the author of this catastrophe, Joe Biden. This empty, hollow husk of a man, a man without honour, a man without decency, a man without empathy, a man without integrity. He's brought shame and humiliation on the presidency, on this country. And if there is any justice, any accountability, this truly despicable man needs to go. Yes, he needs to go. Not just his regime of incompetence. He, Biden, must be held accountable. Not through the 25th Amendment, though it's obvious to everyone he's not fit for his office. And yes, if Biden goes, we get Harris, another utterly unprincipled machine politician, just as weak, just as useless, just as bad. But consider what Biden has done to America. When a president does more damage to America's standing and authority than anyone who's gone before, when he humiliates America around the world, when he creates a moral stain of this magnitude, when he puts our security at risk and our citizens in peril behind enemy lines, when you have a president who is this pitiful, this contemptible, there must be accountability. Biden must resign or be impeached and then be recorded as the worst president in American history. What for that? What, 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 what? We can see these pictures, it's obviously uh, something devastating that's happening.